Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. AMC stock is down about 2.22% at the time of recording this video, but it's holding up its major squeeze level. And I'm calling this a major squeeze level because this is where we went through the squeeze in June of 2021. And I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about this level. It's critically important that we hold this level heading into earnings. Now, anything can happen. Even if we fall under this level, it doesn't necessarily make everything null and void, but it will certainly help a lot if we're above this level heading into earnings or more specifically even above above this downtrending line of resistance because I think it's pretty clear here that AMC should report free cash flow if not a net profit and that is really the key to AMC's success and it was the key to AMC's fall in 2022 they were unprofitable anything that was unprofitable was getting shorted by everyone and their grandma right you just short unprofitable companies and you did well in 2022 well that's what happened and that will be the game changer in 2023 if amc does post a profit and more specifically because the box office is expected to be much better in 2023 than 2022 we've seen a couple movies that did really well but between those movies there was like nothing that brought people to the movie theater now you're seeing movies like megan grossing over 100 million at the box office with a 12 million dollar budget it's films that were not expected to do great numbers doing great numbers in 2023 guys so we have a lot to talk about in this video tesla has not reported earnings yet as of right now that's going to be a key heading into the rest of this week but i do think it is going to be bullish what tesla has to say specifically around their demand after their price cuts and that's ultimately the only thing that matters yeah margins are important i think Elon and Tesla are going to have a way to offset that. So to cut the price of vehicles, I think they're probably getting better margins on their raw materials or their production capabilities are getting more efficient to kind of offset the, the, the price drop in their margin. So the big story from here on out, at least tomorrow with Tesla and with the broad markets is demand. What do they say about demand since they have cut vehicles and if you guys aren't Tesla investors, then you might not know this, but over in China, you've seen 75% year over year increases to vehicle registration. You have seen the Google trend data looking incredibly bullish and seeing a huge spike ever since they did cut prices and many other things that are soft data showing that demand is probably picking up considerably over in china and in america guys so that's going to be the big story of tomorrow let's get into some of the economic data as well and then we'll circle back to amc because the vortex data is looking really good on the day but uh tomorrow is going to be the first day of major economic data as well so that throws a little bit of a wild card into the market uh definitely tomorrow and then on friday as well so tomorrow 8.30 in the morning, durable goods orders month over month for December. You're expecting a 2.2% increase. Last month was a 2.1% decrease, a negative 2.1% reading. So you are expecting a lot. And last month's consensus estimate was 2.6%. So you are expecting a big reversal from negative 2% to positive 2.2%. I think that potentially sets you up for disappointment. But hey, there's a reason why the estimates are so high. I, I, I would be surprised if it came in, you know, negative 2% again. And the markets, they would not like that. So keep that in mind. That is a potential uh, risk factor for tomorrow. And then you also at 8.30 in the morning get GDP growth rate quarter over quarter advanced uh, data for Q4. You're expecting 2.7%. Uh, so again super high expectations the bar is really set high for gdp and durable goods that makes me a little bit concerned because it's so high it's not like you're heading into this with low expectations like you've seen with cpi right last uh, was that two weeks ago now the expectations were low it came in along expectations so that was good but if the expectations are high and 
it comes out low, that's good. If the expectations are high and it comes out higher, obviously not good at all because you didn't even start with low expectations. So there's that. Those are going to be the probably the two most important things. You also get initial jobless claims January 21st. Now, I don't think this is going to be as important going on into the future, the initial jobless claims, unless you get a big change. Tomorrow, we're expecting 202,000 initial jobless claims for the week of January 21st. If you get initial jobless claims, say 500,000 tomorrow, that is what could be negative. I, I, I don't think... If you're beating or missing by 10, 20, 25,000 initial jobless claims, it's going to cause a big move in the market. I'm not convinced of that. We've seen it in the past. Uh, so we'll definitely have to wait and see. But even considering the other data tomorrow, I don't think it's going to be as important. But if you get big standard deviation moves that really shouldn't happen in the data, that is what can give you uh, pretty sizable moves. Now, Friday, that's going to be... <laughs> An interesting one because you get core PC price index month over month 830 in the morning this is the Fed's preferred measure of inflation now last month you were expecting 0.3% of an increase you got 0.2% of an increase so that beat expectations by about 33% and then this month or for December you're expecting 0.1% so you're expecting a 50% drop from November to December I don't think it's unreasonable but I do think uh, just statistically you 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 are expecting like inflation is plummeting and I think it's pretty clear that it is but if it shows to be a little bit stickier in some of these uh, indexes like the core PCE that's excluding food and energy uh, that's gonna be a problem so we don't really have um, low expectations for any of this data for this week and that's what happens when you have seen really good data over the last couple of weeks, you, you you tend to get higher expectations for future data. Now, personal income month over month, you're expecting 0.3%. Last month, uh, well, last month, I should say November at this point, because this all this data is for December. In November, you were expecting 0.2% of an increase. It came out at 0.4%, so 100% higher than average expectations. And then you are expecting a slight drop from November to December as far as personal income at 0.3%. Personal spending month over month. This one I think is going to be key because if you see a big drop in this, um, that could definitely cause a lot of fear in the market, specifically about a potential recession. And last month, or I keep saying that, November, you were expecting a negative 0.1% personal spending number it came out at 0.1 percent so that was good this month uh or for december you're expecting a negative 0.1 percent so you're back at the 0.1 percent um estimate and if it comes out like 0.5 percent you're probably going to see a one to two percent down day just because personal spending is going to feed into gdp it's going to feed into a recession if people are slowing down it's not going to look good for earnings throughout the rest of 2023 and that's really the only thing that matters to investors right now is earnings you can trade off of fear and greed or the federal funds rate being at five percent for so long but if earnings are growing if earnings are good meeting expectations then stocks are going to go higher no matter what else is happening. It all comes down to a uh, fundamental valuation. And fundamentals are getting stretched right now, especially if earnings do come down. So that's going to be the big question uh, from this point on. And any data, personal spending or personal income that suggests spending is slowing down, is going to be a very negative thing, vice versa. Any data that suggests spending is increasing or, or at least remaining decent, is going to be a positive thing for the markets because it's going to mean a positive um, earnings reports later down the line, guys. So there is that. Today and after hours, you also have Tesla Service Now, IBM, Lamb Research, Steel Dynamics, Crown Castle, Wolf Speed, Las Vegas Sands, CSX, and Seagate. Tomorrow, pre market, American Airlines, Southwest, Nokia, Valero, MasterCard, the Blackstone Group, Nucor, JetBlue, Northrum, Grumman, Alaska Airlines, and tomorrow and after hours, you have Intel, Visa, KLA, Laharis, uh, Knight, Swift, Weyhauser, Lynn, Arthur, J. Gallagher, 
And no, we are not talking about the Gallaghers. This is an actual company. Um, Eastman and Berkeley. So uh, that's what you have as far as earnings. After Tesla, I don't think a lot of these are going to be important specific sectors. Obviously, you have MasterCard and American Express. That's going to affect you know, finance can affect fintech. You have a lot of travel companies, Alaskan Airlines, JetBlue, Southwest, American Airlines coming tomorrow morning. So that's going to be big for their sector. And then Intel, that 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 could definitely be um, big for the semis, right? NVIDIA, obviously Intel, AMD, Taiwan Semiconductors. Um, that's what I would watch specifically if you're playing these earnings. I wouldn't play the S&P based off of these earnings. Now, the data that's a different story because i do think the data is going to move the broad markets over the next two days or so now let's get into amc and what is currently happening with the ortex data guys like i said you are holding up key levels and the data continues to look very good so the live short interest of free float is sitting at 22.07 percent the live short interest uh, as far as the shares that are currently sold short, sits at 113.67 million, up 1.22 million here on the day. Cost bar average is uh, wigging out a little bit. It says 31.74%, but really what the numbers are at is about 288%. Yesterday it was at about 300, um, 312%, and it just depends um what time you're you're looking at this data because just like 10 minutes ago it was 288 percent now it says 31 percent or almost 32 percent let's go ahead and refresh this because these numbers are are that number is not correct and then uh for the cost of our max that says it went up to 434 from yesterday's rate at 268 so these numbers can get a little bit wonky um and they're very, very high. Long story short, they're very high. No matter what these numbers are uh, saying on a minute-by-minute -minute basis, even if you look at interactive brokers, you have a 97% cost bar rate. That is what it's been at for a while now. In between 97 and 99% over the past week or so, at the bare minimum, and that is super high. If you're getting those rates on interactive brokers, imagine what they're looking like for Robinhood or TD, TD or, or other platforms in aggregate. They could be a lot higher than that, guys. So there is the short interest data as far as the option activity. 57 orders totaling $26.1 million. Positive order value of 13%. So better than the 3% positive order value that we were seeing for weeks. But... Not quite 50 or 60 or 70 percent, which would be in positive territory. So the option activity remains to be pretty negative on AMC. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at the technicals, guys, and a lot of this this MOAS or short squeeze that I think is going to happen is going to come down to earnings, and it's and it's going to come down to a free cash flow or a net profit. Um, by AMC. If that happens, I think it's a game over for the shorts, quite literally. Now, if we hold up this key level, that's going to be huge. Like I've said in many of videos now, you're going to sit on my lap, that, um, yeah, if it, we are at the same levels as we were before the June squeeze the last time. So if we can hold this level symbolically, that's big as far as momentum and, and, and actual um charting and technicals that's big but even as far as like the trading algorithms they don't want to be short above this line heading into earnings if they know earnings are going to be good now obviously they might not know that but if earnings are good it's going to make for an even more explosive reaction to the upside guys so that is pretty much it hey hey you want to say let's go amc Say, let's go AMC. <laughs> Say, go apes. Go apes. Oh, she did it. All right. Good luck charm, my baby. All right, guys. That is going to be it. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.